You guys want to hear a story? I'll tell you a story. It's story time with Cody. All right. Last night, I had a bottle of alcohol. Nothing to do. My computer's gone because the video card fried. So I thought I'll just make a really long uh, questions video again because that the last one was really fun. A lot of interaction between me and my audience. It was a good time. It was like a little party on my YouTube channel. And I got kind of drunk. So that was fun too. I thought let's do that again. So I make my video. I wait about an hour and a half to go check, you know, the questions. And I had about 10 questions listed and I was going to go to the next page. And I realized after 20 minutes of making my video, 20 minutes into the fucking thing, my internet crashed for no reason. It wasn't raining. It just Comcast sucks a big fat dick. And I hate that that's the only internet service provider in this damn town. It sucks balls. Fuck Comcast. Anyway, so I wake up this morning and I go to see how many comments I have because I had no internet to disable comments or whatever. And now I have 477 comments to go through. So this is going to be a long ass video because I'm going to answer a whole bunch. Let's go for two hours. What do you say? Two hour video. See if you can sit through the whole thing. I bet 20 of you do, and I love all of you for that. How do you feel about TJ's views compared to your own? Uh, with most things, TJ and I seem to agree. I mean, not on music. Uh, his taste in music is terrible. He likes Manson, and that's good. I like Manson, too. Uh, but he thinks everything I listen to sounds the same. And he didn't even get into, he didn't get into music until he was like uh, in his mid-teens, which is very strange to me. So we can't relate on that very much, but... Politically, we're almost, we have almost identical views. Um, the only thing we don't agree on politically is he, he, he loves his consumption. Like, he, he thinks it's a great thing, you know, and uh, I'm kind of embarrassed of it. I'm kind of ashamed of it. I wish I wasn't so vain. I wish I, I didn't need to buy things. Uh. Watch this really sad documentary about Walmart last night, and... Uh, it was obviously slanted, but they did this scene of uh, these people in China, uh, factory workers, and they, they pay them, they, they make them pay rent to live in these squalors, and they work like 19 hours a day for, I think, 17 cents a day, something like that, and it just really got to me for some reason. I thought, thought about all the paper towels that I would bought over the years that I just like, I might have wiped one thing up and then threw the fucking thing away and just think, man, that's, that's that person's career right there. They've been doing that their whole lives <clears throat> and for nothing. <sighs> so I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed of my consumption. He likes it. He doesn't really, I don't know. He doesn't see, he sees it as if we didn't have this, we would, the, the alternative is that, I think. And that, that's probably true, but it doesn't make it any better that there's people that are suffering and living shitty lives so I can have... A ton of paper towels in my house. <sighs> All right, don't drink out of that. <clears throat> Why did you and TJ move to Illinois? It was just a poor decision. <laughs> there was no really thought about it. We just we found a place here, and uh, we thought it was a it was like a party college town. You know, we'll have a lot of fun. Not so much TJ. But Scotty and I, we're both thinking that. This town is bland as shit. <laughs> the parties are lame. They're just a bunch of douchebags. Like, I don't like anybody here, it seems. Everybody I meet, I'm just like, ugh, you're stupid. Why are you in college? How are you in college? How did you get here? Spending mommy and daddy's money well. Why does my penis scare women away? And that has two thumbs up. I don't know. Do you have herpes? Do you believe in free will? No, I don't. And if yes, how do you justify that in a materialistic philosophy and with the knowledge that humans are basically just a bunch of particles put together in a certain fashion, entirely determined in Newtonian dimensions and probabilistically determined in quantum dimensions? Basically, do you see humans are biological machines or not? Yeah, we're biological machines. Everything you just said is what I what I think. Um, I bask in the delusion, you know. I have moments where I where I realize it. You know, where I realized that there's nothing, there's no, there's, the idea of self is an illusion. And those are really, 
like hard moments for me because I, I I feel like I lose myself, my sense of self. Like it, I don't I don't understand my surroundings anymore. It drives me nuts. Um, so I try to bask in the delusion as much as possible. But we yes, we're biological machines. I mean, every decision we make is a chemical response, and uh, you know the bigger chemical response wins every single time. That's all it is. Free will is an illusion. Self is an illusion. Uh, our perception of reality is an illusion because we're we're limited to these senses. You know, like this isn't this isn't reality. There's so much more going on here than I can pick up. Cause I'm just a stupid ape. <sighs> anyway, what do I think of hipsters? I hate that they stole my fashion. <laughs> I've been looking stupid for years, goddammit, and now they make a they make a goddamn style out of it. Pisses me the fuck off. I get lumped in with these assholes. And listen, here's my problem with this. It's because hipsters, here's my definition of a hipster, okay? A hipster is someone, he's a middle class emo. He's, he's an evolved middle class emo that went to college for something that has no real use in the real world. And now he's in, now he's in the real world and living in his parents' basement because he's too qualified to work at McDonald's. But he's not qualified enough to do anything that matters. So he dresses ironic and he has this sour disposition and... A a anything that even has a tiny, a tinge of irony attached to it, he's like, yeah, uh-huh. And I realize I kind of have that aesthetic, but God damn it, I was poor, so I don't even get that benefit of this bullshit, and I don't have a degree in anything. So I'm, I'm qualified to work at, Mc at McDonald's. God damn it. <sighs> and yes, these are 3D glasses. Irony. I'm just kidding. 3D in a 2D world. Uh, should prostitution be legal? Yes. Who the fuck are we to tell women what they can and cannot do with their bodies? It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm all about freedom. You know, like, that's my, that's, that's what I care about. You know, when I, when I hear restrictions on freedom, you gotta track it to the source, you know. And the source is almost always religion. Some, some moralistic bullshit. You know, don't do drugs because the, the real world is just so great as it is. You know, why... Why would you want to tamper with it? You know, that's that sounds a little on the fringe, you know, so we're going to make that illegal. We're going to send drug addicts to prison and make them felons so they can't even work anymore. Yay, woo. Go America. And, and you know, so it... <sighs> Who are your favorite musicians and what is your favorite film? Um, Thomas E. Rack from The Fall of Troy is my favorite guitar player. Uh... He's just such a badass. Like the dude can just play. Like I, I would, I, I would just love to be able to see the fall of Troy. I never was. Thomas Erak, uh, Jesse Lacey from Brand New, because I think that dude is just a fucking genius. And I think he's probably a little bit crazy, like uh, actually crazy. But I think that's why I like him. That's what attracts me to him. And I relate to everything he does. You know, whether he, you know, he he just writes a guitar riff or his. Especially his lyricism, love it. Um, my first influence was Kurt Cobain, which is the same for so many people my age. I realize that, but Nirvana was my first taste of you know a different mentality on things, and it, you know I I kind of based it, all my mentalities off of uh, the things that I thought Cobain was uh, espousing, you know the beliefs that he was espousing. Then later on, there. Uh, uh, few things clashed, you know, he, he identified himself as a feminist, and that really gets under my skin, he, uh, he started to become religious later on in life, yeah, which later on for him was like 26 or 27, which isn't that far away from where I am, so I, I hope that that doesn't happen to me, I don't see it happening to me, but I don't know, you read his journals and they start out and they seem really eloquent and smart, and like the more they go on, you can just see him turn into a junkie, and that's kind of sad. Why whiskey? Because it's beautiful. I'm not drinking because it's fucking 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> <clears throat> Got a comical story about the early sexual exploits of Master Weber? Um, let me think for a second. Alright, I'll tell, I'll tell a classic. Anyone that's read one of my shitty books has heard this story. But fuck it. One time I was I was 13 years old and I was dating this girl. She was really slutty. 
So I knew that I could, you know, I could potentially lose my virginity if I wanted to, and that was my big goal at the time. Um, so one night, I waited for everyone to go to bed. My dad didn't go to bed till like 1.30 in the morning, and I decided, I'm going to this girl's house, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me some sex. I'm going to sex it up in there. So I go to her house, and all her family's still awake. And they, you know, they love me, so they're like, yeah, come on in. So I come in, and I... You know, her, her mom was like, you can stay here, because she thought, you know, her daughter was like a, you know, just a good girl or whatever. And, um, back. Uh, so anyway, her mom goes to bed, and she has a 16-year-old brother who's really fucking muscular, and just like a big jock, and he doesn't like me. He decides he's going to sleep downstairs with us. You think that would deter a normal person, but I was stupid. I'm like, nah, fuck this guy. I'm gonna wait till he goes to bed. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna do this diddle. So he goes to fucking sleep, right? And there's this. I, I still remember the basketball game. It was North Car. It was a college game. It was North Carolina versus, uh, I think Texas A&M. I don't know. I know North Carolina was one of them. For some reason, that sticks out in my head because that seemed weird that the, that a basketball game was gonna be going on during the first time I had sex with someone. Well, we didn't have sex. She just, you know, do, 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 which I had never experienced yet with anything other than, you know, rosy palms here. So I was like, yeah, this is fucking sweet. Anyway, the next day, my dad comes to the door, knocks on the door, and I'm like, oh, I'm fucked. I didn't go to school today. He knows I snuck out. He knew exactly where I went. He's going to think I fucked this girl. I'm going to get the pregnancy speech. This is going to be terrible. Saw so my whole 13 years of life flash before my eyeballs. He gets me in the car and he goes, listen, Cody, you want to go to a girl's house, you just tell me. You know, I know you're at that age. I'm not going to act stupid. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I know what you did. But if you leave this, if you leave the house again without telling me, I'm going to knock your teeth in, boy. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, Dad, I'm sorry. He goes, I just want you to tell me. Did you sleep with this girl? And I didn't answer the question. I just sat there silently because I didn't sleep with her, but I didn't want to tell her that she was like fondling my ball sack, you know, because that's not something you want to talk with your dad about at 13. So he's sitting there like this and he just goes, hmm, I know what to do. Pulls into the mall parking lot, takes me inside and buys me, buys me a brand new pair of shoes. <laughs> I, he's like, you're, you know, I, you don't got to tell me what you did. Your silence said it all, boy. And... So I had these badass uh, Air Jordans, which was fitting because Jordan was uh, went to North Carolina. So that was back before I started wearing chucks. Woo! <laughs> so there's a fun story. Oh, the story's not over yet. I forgot about the best part of this story. Well, we go to school the next day, and my hair was kind of like this at the time, which is kind of funny to think about, but it was kind of similar to this. And the girls in the grade below me, as I walk inside, because the way it went was it was I was in eighth grade, this girl was in seventh grade. But the lockers were set up sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. So I had to pass through sixth and seventh to get through eighth. The sixth graders were too young to know who the fuck I was, and I was bigger than all of them, so they weren't going to fuck with me. All the girls, when I get to the second, the seventh grade lockers, are all fucking like, and laughing and pointing. And I bump into this girl, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And she goes, Oh, you still got some cum in your hair. I'm like, man, what a bitch. Fuck you. And I just kept walking like, what the fuck's up with that? I get to eighth grade and my whole fucking eighth grade class is like, hey, Cody, I like your hair, man. <laughs> I like your fucking hair. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? I've been doing this shit for fucking years. I get to lunch and this whole day, but at this point, fucking everybody is like doing this shit. And I, and I have no idea why. I'm like, is there, did I do something wrong today? Like, are they just noticing it today for some reason? So I go to sit next to this girl, and she goes, you can't sit next to me. And I'm like, why? And she goes, because I was stupid, and I told a girl something that I shouldn't have said, and when you find out about it, you're going to hate me. So you just get up. And I'm thinking, you know, like, what the fuck? Do you have, do you have like, herpes of the hands or something? And, she's, and she just flatly, she fucking, she was eating her applesauce, and she puts, she sets the spoon down, still on her tongue when she swallows it back and I swear I could smell the applesauce on her fucking breath as she said this she said you came on my hands and I didn't want to rub it on the couch 
So I put it in your hair. Tee hee hee. Stupid bitch. So I got up and I leave the fucking the room. And for the rest of the year, I get to be the guy that had cum in his hair. Ha ha. Thank you, girl. I hate you. Women have been fucking me up ever since I was a young boy. All I got was a fucking pair of Air Jordans. And no one even noticed them at that point. What's your most interesting near-death experience? Um, I, I haven't really had anything where I was like, you know, like, like a serious thing where I got seriously injured or something. That just hasn't happened to me yet. Hopefully it doesn't happen to me. That would not be very good. But, uh, I guess when I was younger, I was sick all the time. Like, all the fucking time. Like, from ages 0 to 12, at least once a week, I got violently ill for some reason. And when I was in, like, 7th grade, I went from being a normal-looking kid to I just, I got emaciated. I gotta answer this. Hello? What's up? Oh, are you at Hardee's? I'll be back in a second. Alright, I'm back. I don't know how I'm going to edit this because I know nothing about Max. And I lost my glasses when I was doing a shoot with my sister's baby. So, now you get my, uh, you get these things. So let's go. Have you ever at any point in your life seriously considered becoming an anarchist? Um, yeah, when I was like 15 or 16. I think that is the that is the natural reaction to to politics, you know. It's the natural reaction to think that the best politics are no politics, especially when your you know, your entire pursuit of life is freedom, you know. Whether it be through expression or otherwise. But in the real world, and this is this is reality, if there's no barriers at all, then your personal freedoms are infringed upon as well. And uh, in an anarchist system, there would be no regulation. And that would just mean that someone could rise to the top of something and just do whatever the fuck they wanted to those below him. Uh, there's, and the biggest problem with anarchism is who the fuck's going to build roads? You know, who's going to build interstates? It just wouldn't work. Like, it just would not work. Are you turned on by your genitals of choice? By themselves, or you do need, or do you need the full body? I'm not attracted to the vagina at all. I'll be honest with you. I think the vagina is a scary looking thing. It's like, I don't know, it scares me. <laughs> but uh, no, I need the full body. You know, I like, I like my, the visual is is important to me. I guess so. No. If it, I, I can get, I can get turned on to stuff. I see some boobs or some butt cheeks, but just seeing like a vagina, like a photo of a vagina, doesn't do nothing for me. If Jimmy has four apples, if this is a math question, I'm just gonna pass. And Janet has five apples, and Jimmy gives two of his apples to Janet, and then Janet gives three of her apples to Jimmy. Then why don't they just shut the fuck up and eat their goddamn apples? Yeah, what the fuck, weirdo. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, what's your favorite book or movie? My favorite book is uh, Catcher in the Rye. I know that's a very common thing. And I'm not crazy. I'm not going to go kill anybody or anything. I got a level head, I promise. Um, but, I, you know, I mean, Holden Caulfield is like the personification of, of the outcast. And that's what I always was when I was in school. So I kind of, he was like the first fictional character I related to. Um, also, I related to Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes because I always thought that I was more brilliant than I was. Like when it, it's funny your perception of things how they change because when I was a kid and read Calvin and Hobbes, um, I just thought that he was this brilliant kid that no one understood, and that's what I thought I was when I was a kid. But when you go back and you read him now, it's just this foolish kid that's written as if he he has this eloquent uh, way of of speaking. It has, like, just because he used big words didn't make his decisions smart, which they rarely were. Um, very interesting how that, how that shifts when you get older. Um, but my favorite movie is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Um, I love the idea and how romantic they made the idea of losing somebody. 
you know. And I love, I just love the concept of wiping someone malignant from your brain forever, you know, because I would love to do that with a few people. Um, okay. I'm trying to find a good one because I got 487 questions now, so. Um, Mr. Weber. Ugh, I don't like that. That makes me sound old. Do you like Avenged Sevenfold? No. No, no, no. Avenged Sevenfold is li literally the worst band I've ever seen live. Ever. They were fucking terrible. And I didn't, don't even fucking think I went, I went to go fucking see Avenged Sevenfold, alright? It was one year they played, I, I think it was the Warped Tour. Might have been a different tour. Maybe, maybe it was Taste of Chaos. But they were playing right before another band that I liked. Um, I don't know, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Saves the Day. I don't know. But man, they were just fucking terrible. It was just, it was just like, you can tell that, that they have to go through their shit like a million times when they're recording because there was just like flub ups everywhere. <sighs> How do you feel about the criticism of your videos? I'm taking these off. <sighs> Gonna get the natural me for a while, baby. Um, okay. How do I feel about the criticism of my videos? I don't. I don't give a shit. Um, you, get, you can't listen to your critics because then it waters down what you do. You know, if you try to appease the people that are or, already have a negative perception of you to begin with, you're just wasting your time. So, I just kind of, I let them go inside one, you know, one side of my head and come out the other, so. Um... Do you think that even though someone smokes, that if they get cancer and have to have surgery or something, that they should have to pay their bills for by the by taxes? Do you think we should pay for the rehabilitation of those that live unhealthy? Is basically what I'm saying. Yeah, I I think that when you know there are certain companies that are raking in billions and billions and billions of dollars of profits, that uh, you know maybe they could disperse their their income before you know. Everybody else had to dis had to spare theirs, you know. It's always the, it's always the middle class that has the most to spare when when you have to buckle, you know. Like it's always the teachers that have to make sacrifices, you know. They have, they have to use the same erasers for three or four years in a fucking row. And meanwhile, there's some CEO at Walmart that has a house in Paris and a house in Texas and a house in California and a house in China, and uh, he has like three three fucking uh, jets that he can take anywhere he wants in the world. And he's he's having lunch in France today. And he's gonna he's gonna go to Germany for dinner, you know. So it's bullshit. Uh, if someone's dying, if someone's sick, I think it should be the natural human response. It shouldn't be well. Why should I have to pay for that sick person? No matter how they live their lives, it should be this person needs help. Let's let's help this person. Um, I think the idea of making someone go largely into debt because they got sick is atrocious and just a very apathetic. And it, make, it really makes me sick. How did I lose all the weight? I explained that in my last video. I don't need to do that again. What kind of grades did I get in school? In everything except English class and music class, I always got D's and F's because I never gave a fuck. But my uh, English teachers always liked me because um, I love words. Um, I used to like read the dictionary for fun when I was a kid. I don't know why. I had like probably 45 different dictionaries in my closet and I just fucking pick them up like oh that's a good word I'm gonna try to remember that one uh, but yeah my 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 English grades were always A's always because I didn't have to try in that class it was really easy for me and band I'm just I'm a good musician I mean maybe not a guitar but I'm a good drummer BRB again I'm really beginning to think I'm just not supposed to make this video today there's been distractions out of the fucking Ass. All right, let's keep going. All right. Uh, what's what is your favorite what is your favorite Fall of Troy album? Uh, Doppelganger. It's their best one. Um, why is Cody Weber such a sexy beast? I don't know. What's the weirdest question you've ever been asked? Why is Cody Weber such a sexy beast? Uh, what do you think about the bands Metallica, Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden, Slayer, and Tool. Just not my thing, man. I liked Tool when I was a kid, but I never liked Slayer. 
I think my biggest problem with Slayer wasn't even Slayer, it was Slayer fans. Plus, every hardcore show I've ever went to in my life, at some point, they play, uh, Rain and Blood. And I think it's real clever and fun, and I was like, oh god, not again. I have to hear the song one more fucking time. I'm gonna fucking give, give myself a frontal lobotomy or something. Ugh. Nah. I, I hate Metallica. I've always hated Metallica. Just not even their old albums. I don't like anything they've ever done. Uh... I don't like Iron Maiden just because I just think they're a little goofy, not really my style. And I liked Tool, like I said, when I was a kid, but I don't know, man. I just kind of view them all as like pretentious douches now. Like, it takes you fucking six years to make an album that is mostly filler tracks anyway, and then you shill it off like it's this, you know, great concept record. I just, eh. What broke me was 10,000 Days. I didn't like that record. I think A Perfect Circle is a much better band than Tool. I know you're not supposed to compare the two, but I do, because Maynard's a singer of both of those bands. But I like the band System of a Down. Uh, I liked when I was a kid. Not really my thing anymore. Still like uh, Toxicity, the album. Have you lost all hope in American politics? Um, don't you have to have hope... You know, the, like it does, isn't the prerequisite of no hope being hopeful? I, there was never a time that I was hopeful for American politics. I've always kind of viewed it to be mostly theater. You know, it's they all put on they they all put on faces and they all play characters. So you so you like them so they can have a broader appeal. You know, so they can really get to the heart of an issue, which is how can we fuck the American people without them noticing? And that's that's really a, the truth. If it wasn't the truth, then we wouldn't have huge conglomerates that have basically turned anybody that isn't them into, into second-class citizens. So, yeah. What are your thoughts on anal beads? Whatever floats your boat, man. Just don't stick them in my ass. Um, how did I get into photography? Uh, I, I used to be part of this website. It's kind of funny, it was a gaming website, and I'm not a gamer, but they had a, like, the section where you did graphics battles, and I was just learning Photoshop at the time, like, I think I was 13, 14, and, uh, I was like, man, I want to get on, I want to get in on this, and one of the rules that they had was you couldn't use other people's photos, so for a long time, I just had to find photographers that I liked, I was like, hey, can I use your stuff so I can mess with it, and most of the time, they'd be like, no, because my shit sucked, you know, I wouldn't let, you know, I probably would still let people do it, though. And when I look back on it, it, it does seem kind of douchey, a lot, the way that a lot of them treated me. But, uh, oh, well, whatever. No sour grapes. Um, a girl I was dating at the time, dated her for a long fucking time. Uh, for my birthday one year, she bought me a, like a little 4-megapixel Sony Cybershot. And I just I started this project the day I got it because my my own the only the only thing she asked of me was that if I got it I would use it every day in some way in some capacity I would use the camera so starting that day I started taking pictures pretty much every day and even now I mean I'm not even with that girl anymore I don't even fucking think about that girl anymore but the project remains you know the project outlived the relationship which was her idea in the first place I kind of forget that it was her idea sometimes What's your favorite Marilyn Manson album? Uh, Eat Me, Drink Me. I like Manson introspective. You know, like, uh, he did the, he, he said everything about religion and politics that he could, so I'm glad that he focused his music inward, you know, or all of his art, really, most of it. I, I can't really think of anything he's done that isn't at least a little bit inward. Um, what's the best thing that ever happened to you? My kid. Uh, Michael Moore. I don't know why everyone considers Michael Moore to be such an extremist on the left, because he seems way more centered than even me. I guess I'm, I'm way on the fringe. Um, not that views are important, more like, how do you feel about your viewers knowing that some of them found you through TJ, myself being one of them? I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. Um... A lot of people think I'm new at this game, this YouTube game, a lot of my new subscribers, but I've been doing this for a long time. I've been making videos since 2007, so, you know, I don't think all of my audience comes from TJ. 
In fact, I haven't really gotten much of a subscriber jump since I started doing this video, so I really don't, I, I don't think our videos really uh, work with the same audiences. I mean, maybe a small part of his does, but that's only a, a fragment of, you know, what I've got gotten from doing his videos. That's not why I do his videos anyway. I do them because I like the art involved. I like the collaboration, you know. I like being part of the production. Uh, okay, back to those one questions. I'm just I'm just answering questions at random because there's so many of them. If you woke up tomorrow and found that you had become Sarah Palin, what would you do? Um, masturbate. <laughs> um, no, I would... Uh, suicide's the easy way out, so I'm not doing that. I would, I would, I would turn, this is what I would do, I would turn the tea party slowly, I would shift it to becoming intelligent people. It would take a long time, maybe the rest of my Sarah Palin oriented life, but I could slowly shift them from being ignorant bigots that hate learning things to normal people. <laughs> yeah, and then everybody wins. If, TV, if MTV were to come to you and offer you a, rea a reality TV show, would you take it? Yeah, why not? Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta get in while you can, you know? I don't want to be a reality TV star by any means, but I want to attract as, most, as many people as I can to what I do because, you know, I, it is important to me. Like, I want, I want a lot of people to see what I do, and if, if I have to do it through that, then fuck it, I'll put on a character as well you know I'll become a very extreme version of myself because that's all those shows are you know they, they they're like become a polarized version of yourself and because people like Jersey Shore don't know what the fuck polarized means they're like well, what does that mean well take all the bad aspects of you and turn them up to 11 anything good like any any part of your humanity I want you to just lose it because that shit does not make good TV I want you to fight people I want you to endorse steroids and fuck a bunch of women with AIDS to prove this is this is the the education section of the show to prove that getting HIV is such a low risk you know you can even fuck a completely HIV infected women without condoms like we're going to show this on the show or at least imply it so with me you know it could just be like you're going to become the creepy photographer you're going to be kind of quiet at first but the wild side's going to come out and then you're going to do a whole bunch of drugs and uh, then you're gonna shoot yourself, and the MTV logo will will appear in the bottom corner of the, as the finale. Okay, okay. And then then you gotta go to New Zealand, so no one knows that you're still alive. Just like Tupac. I'm just kidding. Tupac's dead. Tupac died on my birthday. Will I post any more of my poetry? Probably not on YouTube. There, it just this. My audience doesn't like it. Uh, if you want to go to my Tumblr. Cider9film.tumblr.com, I write on there a lot, like almost every day, so follow that. Um, not really not really the best thing for what I do on here. Oh, come on, this guy asked nine questions. Come on, there's 500 questions here almost. Is love important to you? Uh, in what context? Because when I was a kid, the, you know, the romantic love was really important to me, you know, because I had, like, abandonment issues or whatever. So... I took all those issues and I put them into a woman and uh, yeah, I thought that love was real solid and was really there, you know. But it wasn't. We were just kids, you know. We were kids that both had issues and we just kind of collapsed in on one another. And when we broke up, you know, I met somebody else and that was then it was really intensified because I really did care about that person. But, you know, the thing about love is it's so easy to take advantage of when you want to. And it quickly turns into how far can I take this and still have you holding my hand, you know, and I, I'm not into that, you know, uh, every woman that's ever been in my life has taken advantage of me somehow, and I'm sure I've taken advantage of them. So it, it's important to me on a base level, you know, because I, and on a biological level, because that's my, my, my biological notion is to 
spread my seed. So, I mean, the it's lost in translation between my brain and my cock because my brain is like, you want to love this person. My cock is like, no, you just want to fuck them. That's all you want to do. You just want to, you just want to, you know, come on their bellies, go home. Do, do what you got to do. But my brain's like, no, you got to fucking, you got to fall in love, dude. Like, that's, that's where it's really at. Sometimes I think my balls have it right. Sometimes I think my brain has it right. But I usually follow my brain and it tends to get me into a lot of fucking trouble. So, not good. Uh, I'm biased, I guess, at this point. If someone comes along and, and doesn't do that, maybe I'll put a little bit more faith into it. But right now I just see uh, the, the idea of love as a method of control between two people. You know, you limit each other. That's all, that's all that relationships generally do is limit. <clears throat> Can you forgive us Canucks for Justin Bieber? Yeah, sure. I mean, fuck. Look at America, dude. You gotta be attached to us, you know? When some country finally gets mad enough at us and fucking drops bombs, you're gonna be, like, right there. and It'll be our fault. You won't have anything to do with it, but a lot of your citizens will, will likely be fucked with, too. That's my Glenn Beck impersonation, because if you fucking listen to the Glenn Beck program, that's what's happening in America. Everything's collapsing. And pretty soon, everyone's just going to start bombing each other. And it's going to be the apocalypse. And Jesus is going to come in a robe. He's going to take us all to heaven. Do I feel socially awkward? If yes, how, why? Only when I'm sober. Uh, if I get drunk, the my social awkwardness goes away. I even get awkward in front of friends that I haven't seen for a while. For a few minutes. Until it falls back into that range of comfort. I don't know why, it's just that's the way I've always been, for as long as I can remember. When I was in school, I was generally quiet, and I got picked on a lot when I was a real little kid, but I told my dad about it, and my dad's like, you know, this is before, you know, the world we live in now, where this could have got everybody in a ton of fucking trouble. This was a better, a better time as far as this goes. I told my dad that I was getting picked on by this kid, he was throwing basketballs at my head and shit, and uh, my dad's like, uh... Okay, I'm going I'm to tell you something, and I just want you to listen to me. And it's like, well, you know what? And he said, uh, I want you to go to school, I want you to wait till after school, and I want you to hit the kid as hard as you can in front of everyone you go to school with. And I'm like, why? And uh, he's like, just listen to me. I'm like, he's like, the same thing used to happen to me when I was in school. I got into one fight, because, I mean, he went to a little school, and I went to an even smaller school than he did. And he's like, you just got to listen to me on this one. If you hit this kid, it'll show everyone there, including him, that you're not someone that can be fucked with. And no one will fuck with you ever again. So, and I'm like, well, are, am I going to be in trouble? Because I know they're going to send me home. And uh, he's like, I don't even care. I'll take you to McDonald's. I promise I won't get mad. He's like, you got to stand up for yourself. And I think that is brilliant advice. Because if you don't fucking stick up for yourself, no one else is going to stick up for you. So this notion in school that you have to tell your fucking teachers about this shit is not, not good. It's not a good education for the real world. Because in real life, sometimes that's the shit you have to do. It's just the fucking truth. Anyway, um, I went to school. Sure enough, the kid fucking went to throw a basketball at my head. I jumped out of the way. I mean, we, we were still in school, so I didn't listen to it. I didn't listen to my dad all the way. But all, my, all the kids were in the gym because it was recess. And I just ran up to him and I punched him as hard as I could right in the nose. And there was like, like a blood smeared on my hand and he fell back and hit his head on the fucking, on the ground. And I just stood there and my teacher came, came running up to me and they broke it up and yelled at me and sent me to the office. And I'm thinking, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble because I, I hit that kid hard enough. He cracked his head on the fucking cement. But he was bawling like a little bitch. And we were both in the office and the principal comes in and he says... All right, listen, I know you've been throwing basketballs at you, and I know that you punched you in the face. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm saying you and you because I'm not going to mention fucking names, but mostly because I don't even really remember the kid's name, to be honest with you. He's like, I'm not going to suspend either one of you. He's like, if you throw another basketball, I'm suspending you. If you throw another punch, I'm suspending you. So I'm like, oh, okay, fine, great. So we leave, and I go back in to the to the gym and it's just completely silent like dead silent and I just sit on the bench because I was still in trouble I couldn't you know I couldn't go back to recess I had to at least sit there but no one ever fucked with me again after that I did that in like fourth grade third fourth grade all the way until I left high school no one fucked with me ever I went from being the 
the scrawny kid to that's someone you don't fuck with. And that, that's the way it works in social environments. You know, the, the, the people's perception of you is how they're going to treat you. So I think that's great advice. And I think that these parents that are getting sued because their kids get in fights is ridiculous because that's what kids do. That's how you, that's how you fix a situation with another, with another child sometimes. I mean, they don't, a lot of adults don't have the capacity to not fight each other. So how the fuck do you expect a child to? Especially because children are almost always very just instinctual. You know, everything they do is just their instincts. They don't really think about it. It's like kids are always doing stupid shit. <sighs> Am I drunk yet? Uh, I got drunk last night, like I said, but I'm doing this. Um, what are your thoughts on the following artist bands? Manson, I already said what I thought about them. Michael Jackson, uh, 70s and 80s Michael Jackson was the shit. 90s and 2000s Michael Jackson, not so much. Kind of creeped me out. I, you know, I don't like fucking pointing a finger and being like, that guy molested that kid, but, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, to, to not believe that, you know? So, he could have just been a weird fucking guy, because you can't put someone's entire life under a fucking microscope and then expect them to turn out normal. Like, we turned, we, like, we made Michael Jackson. Every single one of us that know who Michael Jackson is, we made that entity. We turned him into somebody that was otherworldly, which is exactly why the day before he died, he was a creep pedophile that nobody liked and had a flagging career. It was just in the dumps. He was never going to fucking make a return. It wasn't going to happen. That This Is It tour wouldn't have been shit if he wouldn't have died. No one would remember that now. He probably would have had two more retirement tours by now. But, you know, the day he dies, suddenly he's a legend. And, you know, a lot his style suddenly comes back. And everybody talks about Michael Jackson like he wasn't this creep weirdo. Because that's the way we rewrite history. And no one takes into account that it's our fault that he was the way that he was. It's much more our fault than it is his fucking scummy ass dad's. You know, I'm sure he had a lot to do with it, but because we were so focused on that dude his entire life, it was no doubt that's what caused him to, to be such a eccentric weirdo. Placebo, I love that band. Eminem, I love Infinite. I love the Slim Shady LP. I really like Marshall Mathers LP. I hate everything else he's done. Biggie, love Biggie. Johnny Cash, love Johnny Cash. How long is your dick? I don't know. Fun fact, I've never measured my wiener before. Um, what are your thoughts on other famous YouTubers? Uh, SXE Phil, Ray William Johnson, Shane Dawson, ETC. Uh, Shane Dawson just gets on my fucking nerves, but I mean, his appeal is young teenage kids, so I'll look the other way, you know. Go ahead, be, be, a, be an idiot, man. Make your fucking money. Ray William Johnson is only popular because he steals other people's shit. And uh, I kind of like SXE Phil. Most famous YouTubers I don't like. <laughs> I really like, uh, I guess Jack Conti is a YouTube celebrity. I really like him. Um, Bo Burnham, I really like Bo Burnham. Uh, but it's really hard for me to think of YouTubers I like because I just generally don't. Should abortion be legal? Yes. It is legal, but it should always be legal. We shouldn't still be having this conversation, even. You said music was your favorite art medium in the last video. What kinds of music do you like the most? Specific genres, bands? Uh, well, my favorite band is brand new, as I said before. Uh, specifically, the Devil and God are raging inside me and Daisy. Uh, they, they just speak to me in ways that other records just can't. They hit a different part of me. Um, I'm listening to Deer in the Headlights a lot lately. Two Door Cinema Club. Uh, I, re I really like this uh, acoustic performer named Jessica Lee Mayfield. Um, I listen to Local Natives and Fleet Foxes. Uh, Arctic Monkeys. <sighs> I think of some other bands. Uh, Trail of Dead. Fall of Troy. Every Time I Die, I Can't Believe I Forgot Them. I love that band. Um, I listen to a lot of music. Like every day, my life is consumed with it. So, what country is the best? Well, if you go by statistics, Finland. But I've never been there. I've never been out of the United States. 
And you know, that's what irritates me is everyone, everyone outside of America, especially, you know, uh, over in, in Europe and shit, they, they always say that Americans are uncultured because they never leave their country. What they don't understand is like, for me to get to like Ohio or something, that's like 800, 900 miles just to get uh, this far away. Like America's really spread out. There's a lot of shit in various places. Whereas if you're in fucking Germany, you drive a couple hundred miles, you're in a different country. You drive a couple hundred miles the other way, you're in another country. And, and the cultures are completely different in those other countries. We don't have that in America. So if there's, any, if there's anything I will defend Americans on, it's that. Because that pisses me off. That snobby bullshit. How did I get into filmmaking? I thought I explained that in my last video. I did. It's the first thing I mentioned in the last video. Watch it. The whole thing! You don't have to watch the whole thing. I don't care. Is TJ a dick most of the time? No. He's never... I don't think TJ's ever a dick. I mean, so, he's sometimes a dick to, like, waitresses and waiters and shit. Not so much now as much as he used to, but that's just his personality. It's not something he intentionally does or anything. You know, we, we get along great because we, we're both sarcastic people, so... We don't have to be all warm and sentimental to not be dicks to each other. You know, we kind of, we get, we, we have our real conversations coded with sarcasm. So they're, they're easier to talk about. What kind of cigarettes do you smoke? Parliaments. And I'm all out. Funin. Will I take two shots of whiskey for, for you? No. Because I don't have any whiskey here. May I jump your bones? Maybe. Who are you? Have I ever been out of the U.S.? As I said, no. How were you raised as a child? How was your childhood? Um, my childhood's kind of strange when I when I talk about it because I feel like I was raised by by three separate entities. It started out as two. My grandparents always had a large influence in my life because my parents had me kind of young, you know, they were on the verge of, of making what they, you know, doing what they wanted to do in life, and then they were sidetracked with me. Uh, so, sometimes when I was young, they had my, they relied on my grandparents to, like, watch us and shit when they had to work. So I spent a lot of my childhood at my grandma and my grandpa's house, which was awesome because my dad's brother had three kids too, and they, we were all around the same age, so we were all the time like she would have six kids in her house which is just like a fucking party when you're all friends with each other so every every day at my grandma's there'd be a freezer full of popsicles she'd have a good lunch we could go outside and play if it was winter we'd grab her big ass trays because she had this hill and we'd just slide down on the hill with on top of the fucking tray we'd, we'd put socks on our hands and shit uh so my childhood when i think about that part of it is just it's flawless i would have had it no other way you know that that woman helped to make my childhood something very good. Uh, I miss that. I miss her a lot. I like talking about her, and I like I like talking about things that we did together because that's the only way she keeps on going. You know, at this point, I, I I really I have a lot of memorable things with her. You know, like one time uh, she used to take me to the Salvation Army when I was a kid because we just lived a couple blocks from it, or she did, and we did it because. Well, she just liked looking around and shit, and she had she didn't give a fuck that it was like socially taboo to fucking shop at Salvation Army, especially if you weren't very poor, which she you know they weren't. My grandpa was in the military and shit, so they had money. She just did it because why fucking spend a ton of money at fucking Walmart when you just go to Salvation Army and buy the same amount for like a quarter? So that's what we did. But I went there because they had this huge fucking bookshelf, and they always had new books on it. It probably wouldn't be that huge to me now, but at five or six years old, it was just towering over me. And they had like four going this way and three going this way. They had a whole book section. And uh, my grandma took me there once and she's like, uh, how about you uh, go find yourself a couple books that you like? And I, they had one of one whole row, which is like seven feet long, by the way, was full of National Geographic from the 70s. And I couldn't figure out which ones I wanted. I was like, man, there's so many here that I like. And they were a dime a piece, I believe. So I think the whole row was twenty-five dollars. But it was not that much. But still, this is re this is really neat. Cause she, she's like, well, which ones do you want? 
And so I picked them out and I set them on the table. And when I get into the car, her whole back seat is full of National Geographic. She just bought the whole fucking thing. It's like it was only 25 bucks, you know, not that big of a deal. You're learning things, you know. So, you know, like she really helped me want to learn stuff, you know. She made me think that that was a, a nice thing to do, a good thing to do, you know, whereas everyone that I knew was like, ha, ah, you like reading, you know, you're a dork. It wasn't as cool, you know, now it's kind of cool to read, but it wasn't when I was a kid. It was all NFL, Dallas Cowboys, woo! That's who everybody liked in the fucking 90s. Cowboys and the 49ers, remember it like it was fucking yesterday. But that was one part of my childhood. My parents were married for 10 years. They didn't have a very good marriage. They were always fighting, never got along. That's one main reason I was always at my, grand at my grandparents' house too, because when they would get in arguments, my grandparents would just be like, all right, you're coming with us. Uh, and my parents got divorced when I was 10, and I lived with my dad most of the time. They had joint custody. Neither one of them ever had to pay child support. My dad didn't want my mom's money. Uh, I wasn't living with my mom, so my mom wasn't going to get any of my dad's. Uh, and it was just, it was, it was really, you know, like my dad, for, for a couple years, it was still real rough, you know, because my dad had to deal with the fact that there was some other dude that was always around, you know. But they became, they became friends, and they're cool now. You know, it's, it's just like a thing now. They jam together. They've been in bands together. It's it's kind of odd, but so you know, from ten till eighteen, I spent most of my time in my dad's house. Uh, I still went to my mom's and stuff, but I just I went to school in Hamilton, and I was only two. That's where I lived. It's a town like two miles away from Keokuk. That they they couldn't exist without each other. Well, Keokuk could probably exist without Hamilton, but Hamilton could definitely not exist without Keokuk. And, uh, you know, my dad, my, my childhood with my dad was all about music. You know, he was always showing me new stuff. Or it wasn't new, it was old shit. He was really into, like, 70s and 80s, you know, rock. Really into, like, Motley Crue. Uh, Kiss is, like, his big band. You know, he thinks Kiss is the greatest fucking thing ever. Mostly 70s Kiss. You know, I, I know he has to think that the, the bland commercialization of everything he loves is, like, distressing. It can't be. But... Because he doesn't like watch the Gene Simmons show or anything, you know. Just loves the early Kiss records. But he taught me how to play drums, and we, I think that's where we really connected. Because music was his whole existence. And up in, before I turned 10, it was like books were like my life. That's what I, I wanted to be a writer. And it's still something I want to do in never went away. But when I was 10, I started playing drums. Uh, mostly because I, I mean, when I first started, I just wanted my dad to be like proud of me and shit, you know. So I wanted to get really good so he could be like, wow, look at my son. But then I really started getting interested in everything. I started learning the, the rudiments and was really into becoming a tight drummer. And later on in life, you know, it's still something that is like, that's like I'm dying to do. I really want to make music again. I wouldn't have had that without him, you know. My mom's always been really uh, supportive of my art. You know, she's always printing my shit out and showing people that she works with and shit. And, uh... You know, she did a complete 180 in her in her existence, so it's kind of that's something I can respect and look up look up to. You know, she went to school and had like a 4.0 grade point average when she was in her 30s. Not a lot of people do that shit, you know. I, so it's you know, it, it makes me nervous to ever go to school because I know the whole time she's like, you know, when I was in school, I had a 4.0 grade point average. How you doing? Oh, and I had a fucking two year old child at home. Yeah, and you know, you guys roll around my house all the time too. It was rough. <laughs> I'm like, yes, mom. Do my math for me. Who's my favorite comedian? It's a tie between Bill Hicks and George Carlin. Bill Hicks is more of my reactionary comedian because he's real like, like has like a fucking megaphone or something. Or might as well. Carlin is more of my like, you know, introspective comedian, you know, he's, he points out little things that you're like, oh yeah, that is true. And it's funny too. Do I consider video editing art? Yes, I do. Completely. Why are so many 16 year old girls and fags interested in photography? No offense, you rock. None taken. I wasn't going to take offense at it either way. It's just a trend right now. I mean, with Facebook being as popular as it is, everyone that gets a fucking DSLR thinks they're a fucking photographer doesn't really bother me because, you know, 
the the amount of good photographers is the same. And if any of those teenage girls turn into a great photographer, which happens, I was a fucking young teenage boy at one time. I mean, when when I did it, it was weird to carry your camera everywhere, and everyone looked at me like kind of funny, you know. But times change, you know. So it's it's cool because this is the first big shift in in time. It, as I perceive it, you know, it was like, I view the old world as like, it really started changing around 2008 and it just keeps changing. And I really, I'm kind of interested in it, even though I don't like what, what a lot of it's turning into, it's still fun to watch. Uh, what's my favorite instrument? I like them all, <laughs> all of them. There's not a single instrument I don't like. If you had a choice that your little brother could grow up to be gay or a member of the GOP, which would I choose? That's really weird. I can't imagine my brother as any one of those things. But I guess gay, because him being gay would have no effect on how cool he was. The fucking GOP are full of vanilla motherfuckers. And they're just dumb. I, won't, I don't want my brother to be stupid. So he can be gay. <laughs> that kind of makes me laugh anyway. What do I think of Muslims? I, I hate that they're discriminated against as much as they are, you know. It's one of the main reasons I try to take apart Christianity more than I try to take apart Islam. A lot of people say it's because you're scared of fucking Islam, but that's not what it is at all. I used to make Islam videos all the time. It's just, there's already enough fucking heat on them, and all the heat on them is for shit that isn't even valid. I would rather pick apart the people that are criticizing the Muslims for the wrong reasons. You know, like... I've explained this before, but comparing comparing a few extremists that ran planes into, into a couple buildings to an entire culture, to an entire religion of people, is literally no different than saying that every single Catholic person uh, molests little boys. Because it's the same thing. I mean, because you got some, you got some bad apples doesn't mean the whole batch is bad, you know? Plus, uh, it, it's, it's considered such a virtue in America to be a Christian, and I think they're just as barbaric and evil as, as far as the texts go. Maybe not the people that follow it, because I don't think every Christian is evil. I don't think every Muslim is evil. But all, all the most evil people in the world use religion, whether it be fucking Christianity or Islam or Judaism or otherwise. How was working with Jack Conti? Amazing. <laughs> Dude's like one of my favorite musicians. Fuck, I can't come up with any intelligent question at the moment. Anyway, why you Americans run around always with some sort of big cup, whether it be Starbucks, soda, or whatever? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I really don't know. Probably because we're all fat. I'm a fat kid inside. I might look skinny, but I'm a fat kid inside still. What was the worst injury you ever sustained? Uh... One time, we pushed my trampoline up against my garage, and I was like 12 at the time, and I had this little shitty camera. And I was like, hey, let's take pictures. I want to get a shot of you in midair. Let's both jump at the same time. As you know, on a trampoline, one person hits it, it sinks down. If you jump from far away, it sinks even further, real close to the ground. He jumped just a little bit before me, and I smashed my ass, my tailbone, on the fucking ground, and I couldn't breathe, and I've had back problems ever since. This one, I was like... Like I said, like 12. Do I have a day job? How do you make money apart from YouTube? Who gives a shit? I don't have a 9 to 5 job because I don't need one. Why Asian, Latina, Indian, Native, Black, or Arab? I think Asians, but that's just me. Are you asking me which ones I'm like sexually interested in? Because I'm all of them. I'm an equal opportunity sexer. Do you think that every really good freestyle rapper writes and thinks it out beforehand, or is it possible to flow that well off the top? I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> but I'm sure some of them are just freestyle. I mean, there's a lot of brilliant people out there. I'm sure most of them aren't. Uh, how do you get a video to look like Faye? What do you use to edit? Sorry for the art question. Why are we sorry? See, that's what I'm talking about, YouTube. People apologize for asking 
artistically inclined questions. There's a problem with that. Um, I shot Faye with my 7D, which is over there, so I'm not going to go get it. But uh, I shot it with my 7D. I just I shot it with a really weird white balance with my 50 millimeter 1.4. I made it really blue, and I used the the Kelvin system to get it that blue. And then I just used the picture style. I switched it to, I believe, neutral, so it gave it neutral tones. And uh, I just adjusted the contrast a little bit in post. Uh, a guy named Brian Green was the one who did the audio for that. I didn't do that. Um, and Dusty Sometimes was the actor from Novice Industries. <sighs> Cody and Fool, what are your views on all religion? I'm not even answering that because I'll... I want to make a long video, but I don't want the whole thing to be about fucking religion, so sorry, dude. That's a that's a loaded question from the start. And your question is five lines long, so. What do I think of our bloated defense budget? <laughs> Obviously, it's not like I'm like, woo, we need more defense! Woo! We already got way more than we need. I saw this pie chart and it had like what we spend all our money in, on rather, our tax dollars. And the chunk of defense could swallow almost everything else. Like, the education was, like, that much of a sliver. The development was even smaller. Meanwhile, we have uh, our, 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 our entire, our, all, all our sewer, sewer systems are, are going to shit. Uh, our entire infrastructure is crumbling. The, I don't know if you know this, but our infrastructure was only built to last 50 years when we were supposed to do upgrades and up to upkeep all of them. Like that's what's, I don't know if a lot of you realize this, but that's what separates us from a third world country is our ability to get to point A to point B anywhere in the country. It's a very, very important part of how we do things. And I don't know if you've seen our highways lately, but they're pretty fucking shitty. They're not good at all. You go below that, our sewer systems and our pipe systems for our water, they're all failing too. We can spend billions and billions and billions and billions and trillions of dollars on a war that we don't need, but we can't fix our own fucking roads. We could put those same people that are over there killing other people, bring them fucking home and put them, you know, give them work on developing shit and our country could kick ass again. But at this point, I don't see that happening. So, yeah, the bloated defense budget pisses me off. But what I think it is, what my true belief is, is... They're just preparing themselves because America is on the downward slide. We peaked in the 50s as far as, uh, you know, our, our the, in, the Industrial Revolution goes. You know, we, we peaked then when we were riding high on the backs of people in the Middle East. And that's why we have all the problems that we have now, because they were slaves for centuries. So our grandparents could have at least two weeks vacation every year. And, you know, we, we want to go back to that. That's, that's what all the GOP wants is restore America back to the way it was. But it wasn't, a good, it wasn't good for for everybody. It was just good for a small, tightly knit group of people. And now the world doesn't operate like that. With the advent of the Internet, a company can literally go anywhere they want to go in the world. So it's, it's time America stops trying to operate under that notion. Instead, adheres to the way that things are done here, uh, done now in the world. Uh, Unfortunately, the way that things are done now aren't much different. They're just, they're, they're coded with uh, false messages and, and good PR, you know. Uh, it makes me sick. <laughs> it really makes me sick. Um, <laughs> what is the best way to go about weed legalization in America? Just wait. Uh, really what's holding it back are old people. Which is kind of weird because old people now are from the 60s and that's, you know, that was a big time for weed. I don't know what the fuck happened. It's funny how a lot of the hippies turn into the warmongers, isn't it? <laughs> Makes me wonder how many of the people today that are all like, fuck this war, will be the ones that control the ones we're in 40 years from now. Uh, but, I, you know, when, once that generation starts dying off, I, I think there'll be, there'll be a much more open mind about it because I really I don't know anyone that hasn't smoked weed I don't know a single person I really don't I don't know anybody yeah I can't think of a single person that I know that hasn't smoked weed so I mean just give it time <laughs> I mean it's already almost everybody in my age bracket is already addicted to some fucking pill or something 
So weed is like the, the should be the least of the fucking worries. Do I think suicide suicide should be legal? It's so like you can arrest someone that kills themselves. Like it's kind of a pointless thing to make a, to make illegal. I don't know. I, I don't want people I don't want people to go off killing themselves. If that's if that's what you want to do, I don't think I should be able to tell you not to. Do I believe the pull out method is good enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> Make your girlfriend get on the marina. It's beautiful. You can sex her up all the time. No cleanup necessary. And she can't get pregnant off of it. You can just fucking be like, oh yeah. No worries. Then I have to use a condom or anything. It's a beautiful invention. Uh, so many how big is your penis questions. What's the weirdest thing you and TJ have ever done? Probably put out an electrical fire with water and ice. <laughs> Which, you know, he was like, I don't know why the fuck he got ice for. But we found out that was a much better method than fucking throwing water on it. Goddamn TJ, I was right. Have I ever taken LSD? No. No reason, I just haven't. I'm not like incredibly opposed to the idea or anything later on in my life, but not the right time for me right now. You know, you gotta be in the right frame of mind to do shit like that, and I'm way too mopey all the time. But I do agree that you probably you if you hit a limit on your consciousness, then it's probably a good idea to expand it. So I'm not like eventually at some point it it might happen. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to answer one more question because this is already 42 minutes long and I already have another 40 minute video so your thoughts on a band of data remember I don't remember them don't like them not my style peace Mwah.